Let's go. Okay, welcome all. Yeah, so okay, the, something wrong with my the mobile. Yeah, yeah, trying to load the chat. Cannot load the chat on my mobile phone. Oh no, am I see it from here? Welcome all. Yeah, good evening all. Welcome, welcome, Mister Tobomi, Just Berlin. Okay, Mamen Kok, Tiger Shark, hot la, hot la. Yeah, usually I'm a few minutes earlier la. Say hi to you all. That then it will call begin. Okay, so welcome all to the Master Leong Show. S E to the moon ah. S E rocketing ah. There's the news of this uh hedge fund accumulating a six percent stake on the S E ah. Yeah. But if I got more details on S E, I'll let you all know. Yeah. So today I think that the major news is the China Evergrande. Yeah. So I slowly chat. And and slowly talk about the news, yeah. So the the format change a bit lah. Because nowadays I'm not doing the master cut really. So I talk a bit, then stop. Chit chat a while, talk a bit, stop a while. Okay, so let's begin. So today the Hong Kong market, right? Wow, you rallied two percent, which is which is quite good. Oh, hua hua lah, yeah. So Hong Kong market up 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 two percent. Alibaba JD up two percent lah. But the the rest pretty much flat. So Beijing is gonna ban short short selling. So that that's good news. So it shows that they are very determined ah uh, to boost the stock market. So on Sunday, which is yesterday ah, uh, they banned strategic investors from security lending during the restricted period. So in the past, what they do is that these big investors, right, they will lend out their shares, then people will use it to short or to sell. Then uh later on, then they pass the money to the major shareholder. So now totally they close the loophole already. <coughs> So it shows lah that CCP is very serious to stabilize the stock market. So there will also be a complete suspension of lending of restricted shares, and also limit the efficiency of securing lending starting March eighteen. <coughs> yeah, so this is a bit of positive news lah, but it it, it only I would say it's just like a stop stop gap lah for for the short term because they don't want the stock market to continue crashing as. Systemic risk, but the medium and long term is still on the fundamentals, or any, any uh big policy coming in to solve the issues or not, and whether the economy can recover in two zero two four. Also, Iden, welcome, welcome. Okay, Bota investor, wow, rocket, rocket lah. BYD, wow, fifty two weeks low ah. I never see, but a a lot of Chinese stocks are really cheap. Yeah, so see what you want to buy. Oh, cash eleven. Twelve more days to Dragon Year. Yeah, Chinese New Year coming in already. Eddie, going to all in lah. Ah, Fernand, ah, Tou Zi Qi. Wow, hot lah. Yeah, Ma Ming Kok. Yeah, Ben short selling. Ah, don't don't let people profit from the the market crash. So because they ban this short selling, right? The people cannot short. Then there are still people that already shorted. So there's outstanding short position that needs to be covered. So slowly, the shorties will cover their position. So when they cover their position, they will buy from the open market. So can can only go up. <laughs> yeah, then all those that paper hand wanted to sell already sell already. Yeah, so most likely we have bottom already. That that's my feeling. Oh, Christopher Heng, welcome, welcome. Harry, yeah, master, a bit uh not not feeling well. Yeah, <coughs> a a bit of cough. I think it's the weather or what. Yeah. Okay, so the big news is the China Evergrande. So the big news is that it's gonna be liquidated. Oh no! So, uh, Xu Jiayi gone case already. Oh, the the founder already arrested. Probably now eating the black bean rice, or uh, uh, under surveillance or what. So he's totally out of management already. Is is now professionals managing the company, and the company will be taken over by the liquidators. So China again is very very huge. Over the past one and a half years, they they keep trying to do the restructuring, but always not approval. So the hearing has lasted for one and a half years. The company still has not been able to bring forward a concrete restructuring proposal. So basically, the Xu Jiaying, uh, doesn't seem willingly that want to use his own wealth to save the company. A lot of his wealth actually transferred out of the country already. So he he move it to like United States. His family has a family trust. Then he own U.S. property. Then his two children studying in Harvard. That that kind of thing. Yeah. So whereas other property founders, right? Some of them they even like I I mentioned there's this founder 
who put like 300 million personal loan to save his own property company. So that one uh, CCP is willing to save the company, like, let the big banks uh, loan the company money, give it uh, liquidity to tide over this downturn. So China Evergrande, the founder, is not cooperative. Or instead of trying to save the company, he's focused on moving his money out of the country. So in the restructuring deal, right, he keeps telling those bond investors that they, they will, he will give him shares of like the new energy and the property uh, management company. But these companies, they are not doing well. And now, uh, in the recent crash, all this have become penny stock. Like you see, China Evergrande today crashed another 21% to 16.3 cents. Then the new energy, the EV group, 23 cents. Then property service group, uh, 39 cents. All worthless already. So even uh, they restructure, they give the bondholders or stakes in, in all this uh, EV company and property service company is worthless. So no point. Uh. In the end, they vote down the restructuring plan. They angry already, so they give up and they just want it to be liquidated. So for those debt holders, right, there's class A and class C. There are two categories of creditors to lay claim in the Evergrande assets. Also, now you'll be taken over like, by the liquidators. So the liquidators will manage the company like uh, what to buy, what to sell, who to pay. Also, it's a super, super huge uh, company. It's the biggest property developer. So it's not, not, not easy. It's not easy. Yeah, so for the debtors, right? Or for class A, right? It's mostly the offshore debt. Or means US denominated senior secured notes. So they actually sold all these like bonds. Uh, basically, it's bonds that is sold to US investors like BlackRock uh, or those hedge funds. Uh, yeah, then the interest rate was very high, like 6%, 8%, or even 10% or interest rate. So it's, it's actually a uh, junk bond. Then uh, class C debt, right? It's actually like, like private loan. It's mainly a uh, loan like owned to like, example, their suppliers or related uh, companies or like their subsidiaries uh, issue the loan. So the, the higher your class, the better your claim. That means you can claim the money first. So Class A gets to claim the money, Class C, or uh, they, they, they claim uh, later because it's a private loan or guarantee provided by the company. Uh. Example, like they, are, they had this like, wealth management product. So when they when they face with the three rate line, right, they are gearing, they cannot gear up further. So they do off balance sheet loan. So one of these is like a private loan like that. They, they sell you a structured product, a, a wealth management product promising you 15%, 20% uh, interest. But in the end, also exploded. They, they defaulted. So those that buy this high yield wealth product from Evergrande, totally they're getting back nothing already. Confirm is get nothing because you are the last person in line to claim the money. So now all the creditors will have to submit proof of, that means uh, queue up to, to claim their money back. So why the CCP did not save the China Evergrande? Why it let it fail? Because SJP the mantra is Fang si yong lai zhu de, bu si chao. That means homes are for living, not speculation. So over the past two decades, there's a super bull run. People believe that real estate home prices only go up. So there's so much speculation. That, that's why three, four years ago, they had a three red line to manually pop the bubble. Because they really see the, the bubble being very dangerous, having systemic risk. So they want it to be cap capitalistic. That means Companies that are poorly managed, that take on projects uh, that are, uh, say, too costly, la, they never manage their balance sheet well, then they should fail. Like China Evergrande, it was over leveraged, it was like 10 times leveraged also. Yeah, then, because they use a lot of off balance sheet uh, borrowing, so those should fail. Then, those companies that are more prudent, more reputable, they should survive. So, this is the true belief of capitalism. Whereas the Japan, they had the lost decade, two, three decades of loss because they save everyone. They reduce interest rate to zero. They let all the property developers, all the banks, all the financial firms borrow money at zero interest rate. Everybody is safe. But you save everybody, right? It does not reset the system. Or the, the toxic, the zombies are, are still in the economy. So companies that are unprofitable, they still borrow at zero interest rate. And, and continue moving along. So 
China doesn't want to repeat the mistake of Japan. So this time is totally different. China and, and Japan, so people keep saying that Japan will go into the lost decade. I, I disagree. Well, China, I think, is, is doing the correct thing. That means they let those uh, founders uh, that was too greedy, that mismanaged, they let them fail. They flush out all the bad companies and China Evergrande is one of them. Then their firepower, right? They use their money to focus on areas that they can compete uh, against the US and can have sustainable future growth, like high-end manufacturing, like EV, solar energy, green, green energy, or uh, robotics, or semiconductor. Then uh, services are uh, like, like technology, like AI, like uh, e-commerce. Uh, so they want to focus on this. So China in the past, the GDP, uh, about 20 to 25% is from property, but going forward, it won't depend on property, it will depend on all this uh, new segment. Really. Property will only become a smaller and smaller portion of, of their GDP. So the liquidators that they name right by the Hong Kong court is this uh, Avares and Marshall. Uh. So they are the huge uh, and experienced, uh, how I say, a liquidator. Uh. So, so the, the two person appoint is this, this two person. Or oh, is the Eddie Middleton and Tiffany Wong. So they are very experienced in the sense that uh, Middleton, the Ang Mo, is formerly a liquidator of Lehman Brothers. Because the China Evergrande is so huge. Eh? They have like thousands over of 1,000 over property projects. So it's very huge, very mass massive. So when uh, in the US during the global financial crisis, Lehman Brothers collapsed. Well, that sent shockwave and the U.S. market crash. So same thing now. The China market has crashed. Of course, it feels like the Lehman Brothers moment. But it's the same thing. In the end, Lehman Brothers crashed already, right? The U.S. market gradually recovered over the next decade. So same for the China market. The China market will also recover. So, uh, but it's very messy. Lah, but it will take a lot of effort to unwind the mess. Maybe like two or even three years to, to complete this uh, liquidation. But uh, they, they are chosen because they are very experienced. Then the Tiffany Wong, right? She was previously the liquidator of Luckin Coffee. So Luckin Coffee back in two zero two zero, they went uh in, to bankruptcy because of the accounting scandal. Then they could not be funded. So basically, they are like high growth tech like that. But but there is like a coffee chain. Then they through accounting, they uh up upsize la, their revenues and earnings. But actually, they were not so profitable. But through this liquidation, right, they managed to tidy up and restructure Luckin Coffee. And Luckin Coffee was actually sold. Or they actually uh, inject capital from in, uh, institutional investors and also uh, state-owned funds. And Luckin Coffee was revived. And now Luckin Coffee is huge and they have more outlets than Starbucks. Yeah, so she's very successful in, in uh, restructuring the company. So after two years, it came out of uh, bankruptcy. So these two, they, they are very experienced. So the big question is, you have a, if you are ever grand bondholder, or what, what what is the outlook now? So like you see this ever grand bond that is due two zero two five next year, paying a eight point seven per five percent uh, interest. Now it's just worth less than two cents on the dollar. So previously crashed or already down to ten cents, then now it's two cents. So it, Investors believe that they'll be getting back almost nothing. That's why it, it's traded at two cents. Someone to get this uh, liquidated value, right? You must wait for two, three years later. After all the asset is sold to pay off all the creditors, if there's a residue, then they will pay you. So, so nobody wants to wait two, three years. So they rather get two cents now than an uh, unknown amount in the future. So uh, based on this uh, Deloitte advisory, la, they did this analysis uh, last year. So they feel that offshore unsecured creditors, that means uh, like uh, US uh, bondholders, will get only 2 to 3.5 cents for every dollar owned. So that's very little, almost nothing. So originally, it would be wiser to take the restructuring deal because you get shares of the EV company and the management property management company, it can be worth some money. But they nego nego here, in the end, everything collapsed. Yeah, so uh, the creditors, they wanted a recovery value of about 20 cents to the dollar, getting the stakes. But these stakes of the two companies, the value keep dropping, dropping because 
uh, both of them they they are loss making. So both of those companies, the EV company and the property management company, might also go go bankrupt. Yeah. So so that that's the problem. So uh, then investors holding the defaulted dollar bonds might get back uh six cents to nine cents. So I also don't know. Or or this uh, unsecured one means is like uh means that the ever grant right they borrow without pledging their asset whereas dollar bonds right is actually collateralized with like certain projects uh all this yeah so uh this one they have the priority uh, first yeah so so creditors they, they will line up law like like who who to pay first but usually the first line to pay out right is actually the bankers or the, the banks uh they they do the loan directly to ever grant like the state-owned banks they actually uh, recover the money first then second uh line is is probably the suppliers or that means those that let, uh provide the goods or uh, materials to build but they ha uh uh evergrand all that all the suppliers money for for the materials then fo uh, followed by the bondholders then lastly is the shareholders so shareholders confirm is get zero shareholders confirm is get zero they get, get nothing already then the, the banks and the suppliers hopefully they, they can get the, uh, a, a, a huge portion uh. yeah then lastly the bondholders just just a few cents so in, in the end uh, investors they are punished so basically shareholders wipe out bondholders almost wipe out we only get two three cents already so all the investors uh, they are wiped out also pe uh, people think that china is uninvestable because ccp do not build out the investors they let all the investors die the investors die yeah so uh, people think that China is uninvestable, but you think of it from a big perspective. If they follow like Japan, like that everyone also save everyone, also build up, so they print trillions of dollar to build up Evergrande. What what will happen? You create inflation. You create a zombie company. So that's not not ideal for the long run because they saw what happened to Japan. Japan uh become uh le less efficient already. Yeah. So instead of uh printing money and, and becoming uh. Uh, efficient now china is deflation uh instead of printing money have inflation like us and europe china is opposite is deflation yeah so to chat a bit before i go to the the next part oh, uh, tonight a lot of people are uh, so con, con you're also concerned about the china evergrande uh. but i think china evergrande the big question is master uh, so is this good or bad i think it's actually good for the stock market because over the past two years uh, always have the china evergrande the negative news so people always worry, 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 but now it's come to an end already. That is being liquidated. Yeah, so people can move on for, for, from there. There's no more uncertainty already. The certainty is there already. China Evergrande already gone case. So the, the biggest impact is that China Evergrande, if it liquidates, will the property market uh, crash further or not? So uh, the, the liquidate is uh, like a very step-by-step -step process oh, over the next two or three years so the the next news to follow up is they sell who will be the buyer is, is the state-owned fund gonna buy or not yeah so so i will update you all again oh clement welcome welcome mom and cop adam ku say china stocks will recover but long term cannot catch up with us hex he will sell alibaba once goes up to 200 ah yeah adam ku he no conviction on china market like he's very pro uh us one uh. yeah jojo welcome Oh, chicken recommend hundred bagger book ah. Oh, that that one I, I never read ah. I, I read is the old school book ah, like the Peter Lynch, Warren Buffett, those kind of things ah. My main God, chicken is a follower. Of Adam, yeah, he's the Adam Ku, uh, disciple. Uh, Christopher Hing, AK say Baba was supplied Tesla by two zero two four. Ah, I also say so leh. I say, uh, Tesla by year end hundred, then Alibaba by year end hundred fifty. Yeah, that's why Chicken Genius uh so so Tesla. Baba earnings on 7 Feb or oh, Ivy Lim welcome. I think should be bullish uh, because they want to report it before Chinese New Year. I think they, they are should be very, very confident. Uh. Yeah, I only go. Yeah, earnings will be good. Yeah, hopefully that the stock price they beat earnings and can rocket. We will see how it goes. Uh. Coming soon already. The Alibaba earnings. Yeah, that's one more week plus to go. To, to go. Yeah. yeah, 100 bagger you, you can just. Nowadays, all the book you can just listen to audiobook on on the YouTube 
for free. So it, it's quite good. Yeah. My main yeah, you need to identify that the the good company at the early stage. Yeah. As a uh like a, example of a hundred bagger stock is like SE huh? C Limited. But but not not ev everyone you pick is a hundred that there's the odds. Like you don't pick like one then confirm or become hundred bagger. Maybe you have ten you pick ten stocks. Then one of them succeed to be a hundred bagger, then you quite big big already. Yeah. So it's high risk, high return. Uh. Then you must have a high growth rate. And what's the uh, tangible addressable market? Does it has a huge market, huge market that it can become the market leader and, and uh dominate? Yeah. Example is like Amazon, uh. yeah. Yeah, so so can SE be, be like Amazon? We don't know. Yeah. Class eleven, China has a lot of good company in early stage in Shanghai and, and Shenzhen. Yeah, example, China has a lot of good companies that are in the new industries, example, AI, semiconductor, green energy. But a lot of these, right, they're, they're listed in the China market, not listed in the Hong Kong market. Or so far, uh, so far, I never see. Uh, you're also into so far. High growth tech. Uh. Or Chu Ket Yong, welcome, welcome. Yeah, you must give China credit yeah, for daring to take the tough step. Uh, because it take, it take a lot of risk not building up. China Evergrande. They let the capital market work. That means they let shareholders and bondholders be, be wiped out. So it takes courage to make this uh, de de decision. Harry CGL, Chicken Genius post on X. He has deep conviction on Baba. Confirm uh, because whatever position uh, he has, he will have strong conviction and push it up. So he want to hop big big. Uh, he want his followers to buy and push up. I believe you ask me what type of company can 100x in 1020. I think VR, virtual reality related company. Uh. Uh, Metaverse, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. MY, AK say if you buy C, you will see sink into the sea. Uh. I disagree. Uh. For, for, uh, for like, uh, you know, hey, suddenly my iPhone overheat. Uh. I think got bug. Uh. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no, I think oh, you don't know why. Never mind. My iPhone needs to cool down. My iPhone overheat. Don't know why. Oh no. I think the some the setting wrong or what? Yeah. Never mind. I think maybe I put it too too near my laptop or what? Don't know what's wrong with my iPhone. Never mind. That that I'll, I'll just continue my sharing. Uh. Later that I come back to a chat. Something wrong with my phone. Yeah. That it, it, it overheat. Don't know why. Okay, so uh China is uh into deflation. So what happened to uh, the economy is that uh, in the recent CPI, we saw that three months of reporting, the CPI was negative. Then for the economies, right, they like to use this management, uh, this measurement method, lah, uh, which they take the, uh, which is called the GDP deflator, which is the difference between the nominal and the real GDP. That means... Uh, the, the raw figure of the GDP against the inflation adjusted uh, GDP. So they expect that we, China will stay in deflation for at least the next two quarter, then the third quarter onwards, then can get out of it. Yeah, so, okay. Okay, okay, okay my phone okay really. Yeah, okay. I don't know why my phone suddenly overheat. Maybe I... We restart my app first. So sorry, today not feeling well. <laughs> this stream also don't have form. Okay, but never mind. Like, you are very forgiving of master one. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what are, are the economists outlook for China for two zero two four? So, this the Bloomberg survey. Uh, economists they say that they forecast home prices, the property market, will continue to drop for the first half of this year. So economists are still very bearish on, on, on the China property market. Only third quarter then can recover. But then you might think, hey, like that, why is the China market going up when things are so bad? Because the market is forward looking. The market is pricing in the fundamentals that is six months or 12 months ahead. So the market now is going up because they feel that the second half, the China economy will be all right. Then things will be okay. That's why the market is starting to feel bullish now. So they, they feel that there will be a stabilization, stabilization in prices in the second half of 2024. So most likely the worst is over already. But for, for me, I'm a bit more optimistic. Previously, I shared that 
I do con I do expect that the first quarter will remain weak. We will see a recovery in the second quarter. So I'm a bit more op uh, optimistic. Whereas the economists, they are a bit more pessimistic. They believe third quarter, then we, we see the recovery. So I'll continue to update you all, see how it goes. Then for me, I previously I said that I expect the GDP growth 4.8 to 5%. But the economists, they are more bearish. They say just 4.6% for this year uh, from the poll of 66 economists. Then they expect that the CPI uh, for the first quarter will turn back positive. Then full year CPI 1.1%. So uh, December, we had the negative CPI. So I think January and February, January, January should be also negative. Then February almost we go to Chinese New Year, spending will come back. So uh, one more month of negative CPI. Then February, March, uh, we go back into the positive again. So that's how I would think uh, of the CPI. But most likely looking at all the data, I feel that uh, the worst should be over already. Another way to look at it is manufacturing because China is the factory of the world. So industrial profits, right? we look at the data, right? is very good yeah we look at the december and full year data it's actually quite good so pro uh, profits for the china largest industrial enterprise suffered their second straight decline in 2023 so for full year last year right their profits were down by 2.3 percent whereas 2022 profits were down by four percent so two weak years already uh, for this uh, china uh, manufacturing because of the global slowdown and the decoupling uh, uh, with the Western countries like US and, and Europe. So we saw the slowdown, but now they already started to shift their direction. They focus more on, uh, let's say, domestic consumption and also selling to other countries. For example, focus on Asia, focus on uh, Latin America, Middle East, uh, uh, partnering with Russia, or in fact, China is the largest uh, exporter to, to, to Russia. Also, in December, right, the industrial output uh, expanded by 6.8%. Or this is the fastest pace since 2021. So December onwards, we saw the roots of recovery already. So most likely, I think the momentum should be able to sustain uh, into 2024 for manufacturing. So we expect industrial profits for Chinese firms to increase between 7 to 11% this year as the prices rebound and inventories in the US bottom out. So what happened is that in 20 and 21 we had the lockdown. So remember shipping was shipping was disrupted. So they cannot uh ship the goods uh, because the ports are closed and, and uh so in 22 right what happened is that they had a lot of orders. So it's, 2020, I think we will shut down. Then second half of 2021 and early 2022, there were huge order. Was they formal to order and replenish their, their stock? So what happened in uh, 22, the second half of 22 and 23 is that they already had a lot of inventory and uh, they don't order that much. That's why uh, 22 and 23, uh, uh, the exports to the US is also very weak in that sense yeah because they had so much inventory because they over order as they formal after the post covid recovery yeah so now things are starting to normalize already so we are back to growth mode so hopefully this this plays out well lah. so i think that manufacturing and retail nothing wrong lah. just that still the, the the weakness is in the property market and it may remain weak at least for the next uh, one or two quarters so Today we had the news uh, uh, like like a lot of people say that oh if, if China Evergrande goes into liquidation, who will buy the all this property? So one of the big buyer it could be the asset managers. So like during the global financial crisis, right? Uh, they set up the four major uh, pop, uh asset managers: Huarong, uh, China Sinda. China oriented asset, uh, China group. So all, all these are, are, are so called the, 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 the big, big four asset manager. La. So what they did is that in order to cleanse the big banks, their balance sheet, right? They buy out all the toxic asset or to, to cleanse the, the, the big banks and, and save, uh, the, the state owned banks. So now, right? They want to combine all these, uh, 
together or with their China Investment Corp. So China Investment Corp is one of the biggest asset manager in the world. Manager, I think one and a half trillion US dollar worth of asset. Uh, and, and recently we saw the national team going in to buy is also under the China Investment Corp. Yeah, so, so they, they want to restructure it. Uh, or to, to, it's like transformer like that. Everybody combined together become Megatron. So they have more skill. So this is the first step because I think what they want to do next, right, is that they want to do large scale uh, asset purchase. So asset purchase is that quantitative easing in the sense that uh, what happened during the global financial crisis in the US, they did TARP, T-A-R-P, Trouble Asset Relief Program. Whereas the government, they use money, right, to buy the boss property. They also had a property crisis called the subprime crisis. So the government buy all these mortgage-backed securities. Oh, that means uh, buy all these toxic asset uh, and also pump money into the bank. So I think China is trying to do the same thing now. So what they want to do is they consolidate their firepower. That means all these asset managers, they combine together, become Megatron, one big cannon, so that they can fire together and purchase all these asset. Example, what, like the stock market, they want to buy $2 trillion of asset. The property market, example, Evergrande. Evergrande, they're going to liquidate. It's that few hundred million, maybe half half a trillion or, or 300, uh, 400 million of, of asset. Eh? Who is going to buy? Uh, who is going to buy? So the government is going to buy and, and they're going to buy at, at a bargain price. So I think they are setting up the play. Lah. That's why there's rumors that they, they want to merge. But, but then the report was deleted. Lah. Yeah, I think... They, that's why I think the Singhua, they, they own self expose themselves. Uh. So no smoke without fire. I think going forward, there, there will be a merger, but uh, maybe the merger is not like that. It, it will be something different. Maybe the, the details is wrong. That there, there's it's still under discussion or they are still thinking of what, what is the best plan forward. So uh, the Sinda, this asset manager, is traded in the Hong Kong market. All, all uh, four of the asset managers that they are traded, in the Hong Kong market as a financial stock. So it jumped as much as 7.8%. So the Ministry of Finance means the government uh, holds stakes in uh, 58, 71, 73%. So they are major shareholder of, of this. So if they want to consolidate, then the central bank or, or the CIC, uh, or that means the, the dragon head, or uh, will make an offer maybe to take it private. Because a lot of these financial stock, be asset managers or China banks, they are trading at a huge discount to book value. So I don't know what is their discount to book value, but like you look at the state, the big six banks, they are trading at 0.4 times book value. These asset managers, are taking, I think they are trading like half or one third uh, price to their book value. So it's also an opportunity you know, to just take all three of them private. They, they make an offer like 20-30% premium to the market traded price. Then they take all three of them private then they become the Megatron. Then they use the Megatron to fire into the property market. So I think that's the play that they want to make. So we see what will they do. So the announcement likely should come after Chinese New Year. So now it's all just uh, rumors only. So the ge general feel that I get is that property market has already crashed. In fact, property market is now very cheap. So big tech firms like Tencent, Alibaba are going in to buy real estate. Because they are so cash rich. Like uh, in the chat afternoon, you all mentioned that Alibaba, uh, JD, Baidu, they are trading at 1 times to 1.3 times book value. So a lot of these big tech, Chinese tech companies, they are trading at close to net cash already. That's how ridiculously cheap they are. And they have billions of dollars in their balance sheet. So like Tencent, they're going to spend 6.4 billion yuan uh, to purchase uh, in the Hai Tian district, Beijing. Uh, also Beijing tier one city. So they, they are expanding. Previously, they did a lot of cost cutting over the past two years, but now they are back to growth mode already because now they can reduce uh, new games despite they are being, uh, there's rumors of the crackdown or, or that, but they are still expanding already. They, they are back to growth mode already. Especially they, they are uh, expanding more towards video, like short form video, the t Tencent video, and also uh, games also. So Alibaba is also expanding like in Asia, the Cai Miao, Lazada, all this, but uh, in Beijing area, they also have a new campus. 
or they take 470 thousand square feet that that's huge uh, or like in singapore that's like ntu and nus that kind or in the Chaoyang district also uh, that that's huge then uh, mihoyo this is one of the big uh, game game company in china it's a private company or uh, bought over 1 billion yuan or uh, in the shanghai so all this is the tier one city beijing uh, shanghai then the n financial n financial spent 1.5 billion or at, at the Hangzhou, Hangzhou is the HQ of Alibaba. Then JD spent three billion, or to invest in Beijing, uh, yeah, Yi, Yi Zhuang area. So I, I'm not familiar of all, all this property area. I'm not a property expert, uh, But basically, it's Beijing, Shanghai. All this is the tier one cities. Yeah. So, uh, they are being greedy when others are fearful. So, in this uh so called downturn, uh, a lot of companies they are cu cutting costs. That means, uh, they they are laying off workers, or they they are giving up their office space to become more efficient. But now the tech companies are doing the opposite. They are going into growth mode. Uh, so so they, they are instead of renting right. Say why why rent when you can buy cheap? Yeah. So they are throwing like one to six billion dollars. Even JD throw uh three billion yuan or to to buy property. So I think that's a good way to, to use their balance sheet uh, since they, they, are, they are cash rich. Because you hold cash, you get 2.5% interest. It, it, it's not efficient. Uh. So I'd rather they use the cash to do acquisition. They want to buy land, hire more worker, expand their business also can. But best is they do more share buybacks. They pay more dividends. So a lot of these Chinese tech companies, they are super cash rich. So just wait for the earnings result. Wait for them to announce more share, share buybacks and more uh, dividends. Yeah, so next is the EV industry. Uh. So the, for the EV industry, right, China and US, the big difference is that China, they are quite into the battery swapping uh, technology. Yeah, uh, battery swap was pioneered by NIO. And now NIO, with the support of the government, right, is standardizing this. So uh, because this is government initiative, uh, so a lot of companies also join in. So CATL, the big, biggest battery maker, also t team up with TT. So TT is the right healing, all this. So right healing, you're, you're on the road the, the whole day. Am I right? Cannot be every three, four hours you go and charge. It's a very waste of time. Example, you, you are a full-time driver. You, you drive, example, you drive 12 hours a day. Imagine one day, uh, it's like you're using your, your iPhone like that. You use the whole day to, to play game. You, you Then you must waste like uh, half an hour or to queue up and, and, and to charge then it is uh, into your uh, hourly income so it's better that you do a battery swap because battery swap maybe you go in three minutes so how the battery swap works in China is that is that you actually have an app or be it your TT, your NIO or, or what or depending on car brand so you book an appointment first you book appointment or then or, or, or what then once it's your turn right then you go to the spot it's empty already because you already booked the spot you go in you swap, then you get out. So you only spend three to five minutes. So it's better than uh, charging because it's uh, very time efficient. Time efficient. So battery swap now is time efficient, but it's not cost efficient. Charging is cheaper, definitely cheaper. Because battery swap, you need to have the difficulty with battery swap is that you have a lot of inventory. You need to have a lot of spare battery and, and you need to charge the batteries. You need to store the batteries. And the battery swapping station is you can see that the space taken is very huge whereas a charging outlet you just build one small station then you at a car park just a normal car park you can just add in the, the charging station whereas the battery swap you cannot use a car park you must really have an additional space to to build up so the battery swapping technology now the problem is a cost problem yeah so uh, but it, it's still being pushed by the government now uh. so uh, both with, uh, for, for me, right, both technology actually work, but they have their own pros and cons. So battery swap uh, station is more expensive, but more convenient. Then charging is that basically is the old school method. Uh, is that uh, uh, like charging your phone like that. So like, like, like charging, they still have a lot. Uh, it's actually a 50% growth. Gen early last year, they had 1.8 million charging stand. Now it's 2.7 million or also is very high growth 50% growth 
Then battery swap is going even faster, 80% growth. From 2,000 station, now they have 3,567. So for me, right, uh, you people ask, Master, ah, the new can make it or not? Battery swap is a huge bet. So for me, right, when I choose between the Chinese EV companies, you have Mio, Xpeng, and you have Lin, you have BYD. So how I will differentiate, but I'm not an EV expert, ah, but from a retail investor like Uncle Me, how I differentiate is that BYD is that the market leader and they are very focused on uh, making the car as cheap as possible. Also, is, BYD is the blue chip, the safest one. Whereas Lin, Neo, Xpeng, I will put them in a, a separate group. They are more like high risk, high return. And they are more like uh, towards like uh, mid cap. So for these uh, three companies, right, the difference is their technology and what they are betting on. Like Xpeng is betting strongly on like full self driving. Whereas Neo, they are betting heavily on uh, battery swapping uh, technology. So battery swap, whether can make it or not, I don't know. I'm not an expert enough uh, to judge. But my common sense tell me that actually both can, can coexist. Am I right? Example, last time I used that example Nokia phone. You can put a wire in to charge your, your, your Nokia phone, but you can also swap the battery. So both actually can coexist. So uh, that, that's my thinking. Uh. Both, both methods actually also works. But then I think charging will be more mainstream. So maybe you know the problem is that the overseas market will, will be a problem. Because overseas like US and Europe, they do, do the charging. They don't, they don't do battery swap. Battery swap only happens in China. So that, that could be the possibility. Uh, so lastly, uh, a bit of the gossip uh, on the US market. Uh, so towards the end, usually I talk a bit about US or Singapore market, talk a bit. Yeah. So US now is facing uh, a lot of pressure uh, in the Middle East. So American troops are being killed already. The so-called terrorists are counter-attacking and using drone. So I think that this could be the... could Although it's starting... It, people don't see it as a threat. Uh, the stock market is still very bullish. But slowly, slowly, uh, it is forming up already. So this could actually pull the stock market down. Because the Middle East tension is actually slowly growing. So the terrorists, what they do is that... Uh, they attack the ships using the drone. And the drone is very cheap, just a few thousand dollars only. Then the US had to use fighter jet huh, or use missile to, to shoot down the drone. It's not cost efficient. So uh, the, the Middle East folks, uh, they are slowly burning the, the, the US down, burning the resource of the US down. And now, because uh, Biden launched the missile strikes uh, against them, so now they retaliate. They, they attack the, the, the US soldiers in, in their base using drone attacks. So I think Middle East tension is starting to escalate. Yeah, if uh, it continues for a few more months, it gets worsened, then the US market might come into a correction. But I don't think it could trigger a crash, uh, more, more like a correction. And now US stocks, the valuations are on the high side. Uh. So, so I'm, I'm a bit bearish on the US market in that sense. Yeah, so, so that's all my sharing for tonight okay yeah so chit chat you all a bit before i go uh, offline okay bota investor chief papa recommend crowd strike crowd strike palantir lemonade wow chief papa you you in their member channel i never see that yeah chief papa i thought he bullish on the china market previously he promote the meituan and futu yeah but but chief papa he's also sell cost one uh. he's also like adam Cook. So you all better be, be careful. Quite right, Palantir, Lemonade. All this is the high growth tech. Uh. I would say higher risk, higher return. Uh. Chief Papa like to promote the 十倍股. That means like 10 bagger like that. Yeah. Chu uh, Kiao Yong, beware of AK recommendation. Yeah. Quite a reverse indicator. Good with theory, but not good within real world investing. That's what Adam Ku. Some of his picks actually not doing well, like Hershey's, uh, Nike, all this. I, I don't I don't quite like that, but I don't really understand these companies also. Yeah, so you have to do your due diligence. Uh. But usually Adam Cool recommend the stocks, it's usually those super large cap uh, blue, blue chip stocks. Uh. Yeah. Tesla strong resistance. Uh. It means that strong support, is it? 
Tesla broke below 200 AD. Uh. I think Tesla is still on the downtrend uh, unless it can quickly recover back above 200. Uh, so it's not, uh, it's still 185, it's still a clear downtrend, you see. Downtrend and it broke below 200 AD. So the next support is probably like the 500 level. I think it might come towards the, uh, I mean 150 level. Uh, it might come and test towards 150. So Tesla is on the downtrend. Uh, the, the valuations is just too high. Uh. So it, 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 yeah, you see the 52 week low. One, so I, I think it, it will probably come and test the 52 week low for Tesla. So you all be careful. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, LVNC don't care about Evergrande, just want to hear Master the Voice. Uh. Master the Voice sexy. Uh. I've been not feeling well. Huh? So sorry. Uh. Investors will never get built up in any case. Yeah, the, the uh, bondholder, shareholders all, all, all wipe up. Unity Software. Uh. Unity Software is that the game company. No? So, so, so it's like all these game companies, they either use Unity or they use the Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine is under Tencent. Uh under uh, Riot Games, which they have a 40% stake. So it's like a dual poly like that. Yeah, but Unity, because they are a, a dual poly, right? So what Unity do is that they raise the prices. Yeah, so they break the promise. Uh. Unity, uh, previously, right, they were very friendly uh, to, to, to all these game companies. Uh, now they started to get greedy. Uh. I think they want, want to take a percentage uh, of their sales plus every download have to pay money yeah so in in the past they don't charge per download they just charge per, per percentage of the revenue like above certain amount so small companies can also use unity software so now they're gonna change to uh per download then it's very unfriendly lo, to this uh it's called indie companies that means independent developer small game companies well the short interest is very high at 11 percent P ratio is also very high. So it's a high growth tech. Uh, so you all be careful. Uh. But it's a good business. Uh. It's, it's a dual poly, uh, I, I would say. KD Woods, oh, uh, Jie yeah, he added more Tesla last Friday. Ping An need to support Evergrande or not? No, uh, Ping An, the rumors is that uh, it needs to support Country Garden. So I think they are still doing your due diligence. It's all rumors. Uh, have to wait for the announcement uh, whether they buy or not. Oh, uh, Jeff. Uh, SW Tan, JB, Forest City, and Country Garden gone case there. Yeah, yeah, gone case there. So it will be liquidated. Lor. Then uh, this is good, ma, because the country, uh, the Forest City, right, at JB is not building the, the development already hot already. Ma. So maybe the government can buy over the Malaysia government or Malaysia developers can, can buy over the land and they continue the development. Because now it's a fire sale. So I think someone is going to buy over the, the Forest City and continue building. Forest City is actually a good project. A lot of Singaporeans will, will invest in uh, Forest City once it, it, it is fully developed. Don't know why. I think I put my the hand, handphone near my computer. Then maybe it's the Bluetooth or what. Then my, my, my iPhone become very hot. So now I know it can, cannot put it near, near my laptop. Must put it some uh, distance away. Can, can already. Yeah, because uh, my, my laptop is for my streaming. Ma. Then my chat, I use my this uh, iPhone to watch the live stream on, on silent and, and to read the chat. Yeah. Yeah, so today I'm not so feeling well. La. Let's chit chat a bit. La. I skip the comments, see, see, see if you got any questions or not. Yeah, so MT Pulse, Felix Wang preference order for e commerce. Ping Dodo JD, quite so, Baba. Or Baba, he put last. La. Ping Toto, the momentum is very strong, but it's a shady company. La. I still prefer looking at the fundamentals. You all be careful. Yeah. Who you guys will pick for 100x? La? I don't have any 100x idea, la, but 10x, the SE got chance. La. SE got chance that 35 to 350 within five years, I think got, got chance. La. It can become the Alibaba of Asia. The, the, their, their payment, the, the Mari Bank uh, is, is doing quite well. I read from the forum. A lot of people have very good reviews and good things to, to say about the, the Maui Bank. Yeah. Someone mentioned that Tesla gonna build transformer car. Tesla 100X. Uh. Tesla the market cap already so huge already. Yeah, Tesla is coming down. Uh. Yeah. Elon Musk also launching his own AI company. Elon Musk is like betraying Tesla like that. 
，哇 ，Go Kim， 哇 ，Today， 哇 ，YouTube， 菜本啊 ，so good， 哇 ，Crypto， 哇啦 ，Go Kim， 哇 ，Thanks for for your chicken chop， 呀 ，so， 呃 ，Crypto market， 哎 ，Over the weekend went up quite a bit 啦。Like I say, forty k is the is the support level, lor, where we consolidate. So I'm quite surprised. So fast it it bounce up already. Yeah. So now we are for forty two k. Yeah. So we bounce up from the forty k. Yeah. Forty k level quite a strong support. Yeah. But the time to load, the time to buy in was the forty k level. So maybe the boat leaving port, I don't know. But if if you want to buy, it, probably is the forty k level, lah. Oh, so oh, last Friday was up quite a bit, up five percent. Yeah, so two billion really asset under management. Oh, it's growing very fast. The volume also keep increasing. So I think there's a this snowball effect. More and more interest uh in the Bitcoin ETF. So very fast, I think the AUM will hit ten billion by the by the end of the first quarter probably lah. Yeah, Bitcoin growing very strong. Google to allow Bitcoin ETF advertisement. Wow, that's that's a change. I think Google want to earn money lah. Yeah. I saw this documentary on Chris Chris R technology lah. What what is this? I don't even know. I mean, wow. Chris R technology lah. What is this? Wow, this is medical one lah. Or this one DNA one. This one I don't know. This one science and medical. All this, uh, uh, not within my circle of competence. I I would say, yeah. Okay. Can Google baby born HIV immune? Oh, they change the DNA so that you are immune to a lot of this uh, uh dangerous disease. Yeah. So this one is very high level. Not many got Adam Cook say by United Healthcare. Healthcare not within my circle of competence. Inverse Jim Cramer ETF closed down. Yeah, because bull market. Yeah, the the ETF performed very badly. Lah, gone case already. Chaoyang District is Beta. They can catch up with all the uh top top uh scholar. Also the Chaoyang for the Alibaba, Alibaba Chaoyang Districts. Also is all 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 the uh the China the two famous university is the Tsinghua and Beta. This is the top two university. Also so is Be is the Beta. So I think they they want to uh like those people that. Graduate from Beta, they want to hire them as a, uh, uh, yeah, you know, as like example intern or researcher to do the R and D all this. So they build the campus there. Uh, make sense to tap into the talent. Ah, Migoro Master JD how, JD same ma, JD still very undervalued lor. But JD I I don't expect the results to be good lah. But because JD they recently just fired the CEO all this so. Uh, then the Liu Changtong came back, ma. So I think at least need half or one year to to for Liu Liu Changtong to to clean up the mess and restart the engine. But JD is basically they have a lot of cash in their balance sheet, lah. So have to be patient, no. So I I I will spend that like, maybe my entire year, entire two zero two four slowly accumulating JD. I think JD the boat will be stuck at port for for quite some time. I think maybe it has a recovery Alibaba and Tencent. Will chong more, but I don't expect JD to chong because the, their results will be more disappointing. But they are still very undervalued because they have they are almost net cash. That's why I, I'm slowly DCAing into JD. So that, that's my thinking lah. Uh. Amazon so strong uh, when Baba hundred twenty lah, but by year end no, uh, hopefully hopefully, yeah. Min Chin battery EV battery uh can be a problem, so uh battery swap is a solution. Yeah, battery swap. Uh, the thing with battery swap is that is 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 a good innovation, but it's too expensive. Uh, because of keep costing the inventory. So, new one way is that they want to spin up their battery business. But boss is the one dragging their earnings. They cannot be profitable because of the battery swap business. Yeah. Clutch eleven battery is forty percent of the EV value. So ba battery swap allows you not to be stuck with. One battery, uh, hex the resale value. Oh, I see. So usually, like you, you buy a new car, right? Then you must subscribe to the battery plan. Then, then that's recurring income. Like one whole year, you 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 can go and swap 
uh, use the battery swap station, use the app, all this. Yeah. Why Trump win will be chaotic? Trump is more unpredictable. Biden is incompetent, but Biden is more predictable. He's very pro the, the, the common folks. But Biden now, the, the problem is the immigration crisis. Uh. Yeah. Radiation, ML, what? radiation very strong. Uh. Master must take care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks all for the concern. Yeah. Don't know why they recently, Master not feeling so well. Maybe it's the, the weather or maybe my stress or what. Yeah, but every week I, I'm seeing a psychologist. Uh, then she got help me review, uh, give me, teach me some techniques, how to manage my stress. So I slowly adjust. Uh, I slowly adjust. Yeah. Now getting professional help. Yeah. So I want to like slowly learn how to manage my, my emotions. So master want to slowly get well also. Yeah. That's why maybe recently a bit more moody lor. Yeah. Lee Yong, welcome, welcome. Yeah, but but previously when Alibaba was crashing that time, that was the most stressful moment. Lah. Yeah, now Alibaba, I think the worst is over. Lah. So I, I I'm not that stressed, lah, but just how to, learning how to manage my life, lor, like manage my YouTube, uh, manage my anxiety, then uh, get professional help, uh, listen to them. Oh so so that that that's my direction for, for this year. Lor. Yeah. Yeah, Forest City rental RM eight hundred per month. Yeah, very cheap. Some people they, they they rent at Forest City, then they come in, uh, Singapore, daily uh, in and out or uh, in Singapore to work, then go back Forest City to sleep. But the problem is custom jam uh, If you, you drive motorbike or or you you like three four a.m. come in Singapore that type that then can uh, yeah. JH, the insurer plan to put China Sinda asset management yeah, under the CIC. Yeah. Or or put, put put under CIC. Consolidate, become mega cannon. But but now don't know what's the plan. Yeah. Uh decal, a uh, place it. Adam Ku and Mr. Lu should learn from you. China analysis. Uh they say policy and run away very shadow. Yeah, they, 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 uh, I, I say that, I will say that because it, it's not that I'm an expert, uh, I, just that I spend more time because I believe that China will overtake the US in the next 10 to 20 years. So for me, right, every day I spend like three to four hours doing research. So I'm very curious and I keep learning about the China market. So my YouTube is very simple, ma. I, I read all the Billy Billy. <laughs> content creators, I read the Chinese articles, then I just share with you all. So that's why it seems that I know more about the China market. Uh, just that because I'm more interested in, in the China market, I believe China is the future. Then Adam Ku and Mr. Lu, I would say that uh, their knowledge of China is very surface because they only read the, the, main, the, the news headline only. They never go very deep to study the industry, like the EV industry, the battery swapping technology. Uh, they don't study all that. Because Adam Ku and Mr. Lu, they are pro US. They they are bullish on US uh, because their their portfolio is very heavy on the US market. So it depends on, on what you, you focus on. That's why I get to realize that already. Like I like uh, last year I make a lot of content on the US market. Not much people watch because a lot of co content creators also make US market. So it's very common. So that that's not a advantage that I have. Then I realized that actually not many people know about China market. So so this year and late of last year, my, my, my content focused more heavily on, on the China market because I believe oh this is more valuable. Because not, not many people know, know that much about China market. Yeah. Even when they talk about that like, there are a lot of content creators from the US or they talk about Alibaba. As example the Jeremy Lefufu, all this uh, then some of these US content creators they are starting to be very uh, bullish bullish on Baba this but they don't really understand the, the China culture, the China economy, the China, the different technology and their, their, their industries, all these. Uh. So they, they cannot go deep. Ah, yeah. So, so that, that's the difference. Uh. To go deep, you must really uh, spend a lot of time uh, studying. Uh. Yeah. Master buy stress toy. Uh. Don't, uh. Okay, uh, master, I, I have medication. I also have... Uh, the, the the techniques uh, that, that, that the psychologists teach me uh. yeah example like meditation uh, writing a journal 
uh, going for a walk. Exercise is good. Uh. Every day I, I go for a walk. Yeah, th- things like that. Uh. And, and some, some techniques uh, uh, to, to, to manage my, my stress. Uh, uh, mindfulness. Uh. Now, now, now my, my the psychologist teaching me how to be mindful. Mindfulness. Uh. I also don't know how to explain. Uh. Yeah. Is a- everyone here an accountant? Yeah. CFA. Uh. Wow. You also into CFA. Uh. CFA uh, is, is uh, good if you want to be working in the financial industry, like an analyst or a fund manager. For self-learning, I think just own self-learn can already. Uh. For CFA, once you get CFA, the title, you every year need to pay the membership one. So it's a recurring cost. Yeah. But C- CFA is more for professional fund management. Uh. No need to go and learn one. Uh. Yeah, retail and, and fund management different. Uh. I really, what do you think of CFA? Wow, wow, thank, thanks for your Milo Peng. Oh, so CFA is very professional. Uh. Yeah, I did CFA level one before. I, I failed. Uh. So master is not very academic. Master is not strong in uh, uh, academic stuff. Uh. But, but it's a lot of things uh, that you learn about the economics. Uh. You learn about derivatives. Uh. You learn about equity market, bond market, all the calculation, all this. So like CFA level one, you, you get all the knowledge about capital markets and, and financial instruments. CFA level two and level three is more of portfolio level. How to manage a portfolio. Uh, the alpha, beta, gamma, theta, all this, lah, all the grid work start to come out. Lah. But I think not relevant. Lah. Plus, that, that, that is like, let's say you manage a professional fund. Lah, or th- that's the matrix that they measure you. Like what's your alpha? Like taking the same amount of risk can you generate an extra return so that's the job of, of professional uh, investor but as a retail investor you need to think so much uh, just buy companies that you understand and you hope for long term and you hope to what big big law so uh, as a retail investor no, no need cfa uh, i think plus the way you invest will be very different from the institutional investor institutional investor actually you are handicapped Example, you are a fund manager managing 100 million, or you can only buy large cap company, you cannot buy small cap company. Each position, you cannot over allocate maximum 5% in one uh, counter only. So, so there is a lot of restriction uh, when you manage professional, professionally. It's more like how to protect your downside. Uh, as a professional man- manager, you number one is protecting your downside uh, because you don't want your portfolio to be wiped out. Uh, whereas the retail investor is the opposite. Video investor is like how to make big gains. So the thinking is different. As a professional fund manager, a lot of them might survival is more important than outperformance. Because you survive every year you get the management fee already ma. Yeah, so 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 the, it's very different. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, instead of CFA I prefer to read those uh, investing book or like Peter Lynch, One Up Wall Street, Morningstar, the five rules of uh, investing then a few town, uh, uh, rule number one, uh, th- those kind of books. Oh. Yeah, like the, the Philip Fisher, uh, Common Stock, Uncommon Profit. All the old school value investing books. Ah. Uh, I, I think I, 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 also I've done CFA before. I've learned all these investing books before. I still like the old school investing. Uh, but no right, no wrong. In the end, you must find the investing style or, or method that you believe in. Ah. Some people, they don't believe in stock picking because they believe in the efficient market hypothesis. So you study uh, CFA, you also learn about the efficient market theory. Ma. So you believe or not, that, that's a different thing. Uh. Yeah, For me, I don't believe la, in the efficient market. I think the market is not efficient. La. That's why the China market is so uh, undervalued. Uh. Yeah, my main court, Chicken used to know a lot about China market. Now he just follow Adam Ku. Yeah, Chicken, I think that he lose interest. La. In the China market, yeah, well, China market is so stressful, so uninvestable. So chicken now we focus more on the U.S. market already. Yeah, uh, ah, uh, chicken is still optimistic on China, but he never sell anything uh, That one, I don't know already. Nowadays, uh, I never watch his vi- videos much. Uh, I just go in, scan, scan a bit, then come out with go in, scan, scan a bit, come out. Eh? Yeah. Okay. CFA waste time, waste money. Yeah. <laughs> Need to renew. Yeah, like every year must pay the the the, the fees one. Yeah, because 
Oh yeah, you if you are a fund manager, all this you need the CFA destination, ma. But CFA you can just read the books, the study material online, ma. You can you can study CFA for free, but you take the exam, you get the certification, you need to pay money. Do, do, yeah, so 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 it depends on what is your belief, lor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, CAPM, ah, yeah, it's the capital market theory, ah. Yeah. CFA you can self study, lor. You just search online, ma. CFA every year the syllabus about the same one. Then you you see, you just download the the ebook. You you see whether you, you like it or not, lor. Yeah, don't don't anyhow sign up for the CFA, lah. Yeah, you just own self read a bit. See whether suits you or not. Very academic, very professional, lah. Yeah, uh, it's because I I study before the CFA, ma. That's why I know all the professional jargon. But I don't as I don't use those professional jargon. I just explain to you all in like the layman terms. Yeah. Okay, so Mister Token, uh, CFA like WWE title. Yeah, it's like title like that, lah. Yeah, still thinking when China will up at least ten percent. I think by year end China will be much higher, like maybe fifty percent or hundred percent higher. Just be patient, no. I think the worst is over. We see that the, the the government is doing a lot to to support. Yeah, just a matter of time. Yeah, so that's all my sharing for tonight. Thanks all for coming. Master will continue to update you all. So take care all. Have a good rest. Good night. Take care. Bye bye. Ding 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 ding.